Check this out, family. The United States Air Force just came out with a new logo. Y'all peep game? Y'all peep game? It's a UFO. It's a UFO. I'm about to break this whole thing down, too. This is how they're going to start the new world order, the one world government. We often forget how much unites all the members of humanity. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat to make us recognize this common bound. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. And yet, I ask you, is not an alien force already among us? What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war. We know now we live in an ever-expanding universe. We know that there are billions of stars and planets literally out there, and the universe is getting bigger. We know from our fancy telescopes that just in the last two years, more than 20 planets have been identified outside our solar system that seem to be far enough away from their suns and dense enough that they might be able to support some form of life. So it makes it increasingly less likely that we're alone. Oh, you're trying to give me a hint that there are aliens. No, I'm trying to tell you I don't know. But <laughs> if we were visited someday, I wouldn't be surprised. I just hope that uh, it's not like Independence Day, that it's, uh, you know, a, a conflict. Well, now we have friendly Maybe aliens. the only way to unite this incredibly divided world of ours. They're out there. We better think of how all the differences among people on Earth would seem small if we felt threatened by a space invader. That's the whole theory of independence. You're right. You know, that was the message of that movie Independence Day with Will Smith and was, you know, well, we were fighting each other all the time, but it, if all of a sudden space aliens attack us, the <laughs> Russians and the Americans love each other. The Chinese can't wait to chip in. I mean, we're all, you know, they're swinging the same bat. We shouldn't need that kind of external threat yeah, yeah. to do what is self-evidently right for the world. It's very hard to get inflation in a depressed economy, but if you had a program of government spending plus an expansionary policy by the Fed, you could get that. So if you think about using all of these things together, you could accomplish you know, a great deal. I mean, if, if, we, if we discovered that uh, you know, space aliens were planning to attack and we needed a, a massive buildup to counter the, the space alien threat um, and really inflation and budget deficits took secondary uh, place to that, um, this slump would be over in 18 months. And then if we discovered, whoops, we made a mistake. There aren't actually any space aliens. So we need aliens. Orson Welles be a better... what you're saying. No, that's a, that's a, there was a Twilight Zone episode like this in which uh, scientists fake an uh, alien threat in order to achieve world peace. Well, this time we don't need it. We need it in order to get some fiscal stimulus. One of these plans for Project Bluebeam is to stage an elaborate worldwide faked alien invasion with UFOs that will be seen in the sky. These will either be made on this planet with secret technology driven by craft operated by black budgets and military or advanced holographic imagery. You people out there have been ignoring the UFO phenomenon for too long. It has all the earmarks of the most successful, most sophisticated mind control operation in the history of the world, and you are ignoring it. What better way to implement a plan to bring about a one world government than to create, create the possibility in the minds of the people of the world that we are being threatened from some other species, from some other planet, and do it in a way that if anybody questions it or challenged it or wants to talk about it publicly, that they are ridiculed. And the ultimate goal is to make the earth look very small to present the people of the world with an external threat to this earth, a superior race from some other planet, vastly superior to us in intellect, philosophy, and technology, in order to cause the dissolution of nation states, the dissolution of all existing religions, and the formation of the world totalitarian socialist government. My name is Carol Rosen. I'm an educator who became the first woman corporate manager of an aerospace company, Fairchild Industries. I met the late Dr. Werner von Braun in early 74. At that time, von Braun was dying of cancer.
but he assured me that he would live a few more years in order to tell me about the game that was being played. That game being the effort to weaponize space. First the Russians were the enemy against whom we're going to build space-based weapons. Then terrorists would be identified, and that was soon to follow. We heard a lot about terrorism. Then we were going to identify third world country crazies. We now call them nations of concern. But he said that would be the third enemy against whom we would be needing to build space-based weapons. And the funniest one of all was against what he called aliens, extraterrestrials. That would be the final card. And over and over and over during the four years that I knew him and was giving his speeches for him, he would bring up that last card. And remember, Carol, the last card is the alien card. We're going to have to build space-based weapons against aliens. And all of it, he said, is a lie. Extraterrestrial beings. Oh, yeah, that's the next threat. Uh, that's what the system's going to tell you. This is not a joke, though. The Air Force simulated an alien attack. That's the IDF Air Force, right? And this is specifically referring to the OFEC technology unit in the IDF simulated a scenario of an alien attack on the IDF's cyber systems. The soldiers tried to gather intelligence on the spacecrafts in order to progress in their mission, Air Force officials said. We all know, but still pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. To use the COVID-19 crisis as a timely opportunity to reflect on the lessons the cybersecurity community can draw and improve our preparedness for a potential cyber pandemic. Prepare the world for a fake alien invasion. 100% fake, okay? And obviously this fake alien invasion will be made possible with the advanced hologram technology that, well, the public doesn't know about, the secret breakaway civilization that many of us call the New World Order has technology that we can't even fathom, okay? Way beyond what we have, uh, what we see here in the public eye. And I'll delve into that a little bit uh, toward the latter half of this video. There's uh, many, many reasons why they would do this. They want to bring about their one world government, their one world religion. They want to trick everybody into worshiping and looking up to these false idols, uh, these fake aliens, or whatever you want to call them, and they're just going to tell you what to do because they're going to uh, por be portrayed as more wise and more smart and technologically advanced and evolved. Now, as I already mentioned, uh, much of my research goes on to suggest that Israel will play a major role in this propaganda, uh, this fake alien propaganda. They're going to be uh, portrayed as sort of the, these religious figures as well. That's why Israel is going to play a huge role in this. Um, like an antichrist type figure may be involved as well. Jerusalem's going to be involved. You know, the, whole, the Mecca, the Holy Land, all that stuff, okay? They're going to connect it all. That's why you see ancient, ancient aliens all over the TV telling you that, uh, you know, um, the gods were actually aliens, you know, and, and that Jesus was an alien and stuff. It's propaganda. Okay, y'all, now look at this shit. Men in black. Men in black. Men in black. Men in black again, all night long, right? Let's go down to HBO. Let's see what HBO is showing. War of the Worlds, Edge of Tomorrow. Let's see what other alien shit's on right now, because they're getting... Oh, more War of the Worlds, same thing. Species. Oh, look. Suddenly, Species 1 and 2 are going to be on. And Species 3. All the fucking alien movies are all on. Why? Because they're going to push this shit. Be ready, the more you know. It's coming, folks. They're going to use this. It's called Project Blue, Blue Beam. If you're interested in more information on that, you can just look it up. Project Blue Beam. Uh, and that's some of the technology they, they intend to use to fake this alien invasion.
As many of you may remember, back in 2012, Tupac performed at Coachella. Yeah, right? Oh, didn't he die like uh, dozens of years before that? Yes, he did. But he was rolled out as a hologram. And people, it, it looked pretty real. Okay? Same thing with Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson in 2014. Now the grand finale. This is some scary shit. In March 1997, an event known as Phoenix Lights became the most infamous UFO sighting in history. A mile-wide vessel, clearly not man-made, flew slowly and silently over the state of Arizona and was witnessed by 10,000 people, including the governor of Arizona. To date, there has been no reasonable explanation. But for every witness interviewed, the craft was as real as anything they'd ever seen. Their lives were transformed. They now believe that we truly are not alone. However, there is another truth, for I know what they really saw. 1986, while stationed at an underground installation near Boulder, Colorado, I was introduced to Project Skybeam by Lieutenant General Andrew Garris. I was then led down a corridor and into a large hangar where a stealth bomber hovered only 20 feet above me. I stood there confused, and Garris looked over me and smiled, then asked if I was certain of what I was seeing. I replied, of course, what else could it be? I was then shocked to find out that this wasn't a real craft. It was a projected hologram. Since the early 1950s, scientists had been developing holographic technology, and over the years improved it to a state that we can only imagine. As I stood there staring at the bomber, which looked so absolutely real and solid that I could reach up and touch it, I contemplated the possibilities. What if this projection was a thousand feet up in the sky? How would anyone know that that was an illusion? The Phoenix Lights craft, witnessed by 10,000 people, was the first grand-scale sky beam test upon the public. It succeeded beyond expectations. In October 1938, Orson Welles unleashed his War of the Worlds radio broadcast to the American public. It was so realistically portrayed, vast portions of the population went into panic. Terrified citizens scrambled to evacuate their cities in droves. America had been easily tricked by very simple means. To amplify this response, those who are truly in power, not only our country, but all the countries on the planet, and who are the true purveyors of the depopulation process, have formulated the final stage of their sinister plan. In the year 2024, a global event will alter the course of mankind's future. The world will stand witness to a massive alien invasion. Thousands of projected holographic alien warships will blanket the skies, sending people into a global panic. Real military crafts within the holograms will inflict actual damage to the surrounding areas to sell the gimmick. And as a result of the ensuing human chaos, a one world government will immediately form without any resistance from the people. They will be the new world order. Once this happens, we as a people will be doomed to enslavement and accelerated depopulation. With that said, the only hope for human salvation is to acquire and spread the knowledge of these activities and agendas. Resist, retaliate, and conquer this opposing enemy. The time is now, as humanity is rapidly approaching. You speaking about what many people refer to as Operation Blue Beam. There's an operation called the Phoenix Light Project. Tens of thousands of people were witness to a craft about a mile long. A mile in the sky, people saw it. This is a hologram. You are looking at a hologram. It's so real, you feel you could reach out and touch it. Over 10,000 witnesses saw that. They believe they saw an aircraft. The ETs are coming. Now imagine tomorrow, you're going to see thousands of aircraft. Not as big, smaller, but aircrafts. Coming in, flying all over the United States, Europe, whatever it is. And then you're going to be attacked. But those attacks will happen with real missiles. Or real planes, you understand? They're going to say my government is right, they want to protect me. You declare an emergency. You declare one world government. 
Nobody will resist. People will say thank you. And that's how you take over. Wow. They have the technology. They can do this tomorrow morning. Let me ask you this one, then. What do you think about all this, the Pentagon saying that there's crafts that are coming from another world? That's a that's, uh, new world order. What do you think that is, though? Uh, getting people to f believe in the fake alien invasion. So what do you think those things are these people keep saying? Uh, it's probably, um, who knows? Uh, the Nazis were scaring their people with UFOs. They made UFOs, like, and they were like scaring people. It's like a, it's, look, look at the timeline. The, time the, the Nazis time were trying to develop some kind of an actual flying saucer, and right? they were scaring their people. And they were using like, look, we're going to save you. Look, UFOs. They were scaring them. Like, the government's going to save you from the UFOs, right? So, 1946, World War II's over. Uh, 1946-47, Operation Paperclip. That's when we took a bunch of Nazis, and Russia took a bunch of Nazis. And so, 1947, Roswell. Right there. That was Roswell was the beginning of the UFO craze. Right after Roswell, all these comic books, Mars Attacks, in the fifties, all these shitty ass space movies and alien movies. There was Star Trek came, but notice their synchronicity. That's because they are not real. In fact, nothing in this video is real. It's Blue Beam Project test to facilitate future fake alien extraterrestrial UFO invasion. Unsuspected crowd is stunned when creatures started to appear out of the water. Not only they can see and hear them, now they can feel and interact with them. That's right, new blue beam technology allows not only to see and hear the holograms, but actually feel them. It is possible by manipulating the density of air and water molecules. New alien technology allows scientists to slightly increase the distance in hydrogen atom core protons and orbiting electrons. The change is less than 1000%, yet it is feel like you are touching the real thing. Look how happy and amazed adults and children. They actually interacting with non-existing sea lions, bears and even...